Hey friends, welcome back to another Energy Weekly video. This week it is August 15th through the 21st. How did the full moon treat you? By the way, the full moon energy is available to us through the weekend, um, which is when I'm creating this video. It's the Pisces moon weekend. Um, I believe in the 12th house, right? 12th house of endings. <laughs> <laughs> sort of big picture things, big cycles ending the last house. I know there was somebody who commented that their Aquarius is in the 12th house and so that was being highlighted for you then. Um, I like to take Pisces moon weekend this weekend as um, time to increase sensitivity, a time of increased sensitivity. So you know, you could approach it a couple different ways, a passive way, as in to see what's coming up for you to be integrated. Like, what are you learning from the full moon that, that what was illuminated that's becoming integrated? Or maybe a more active way, um, an active search, engaging in something creative or some sort of spiritual search, other spiritual search. I feel like this practice for me of these videos is more of the, the latter than the former. But there's always, oh, the lover showed up, Gemini. Communication. Uh, Mercury. Mercury is highlighted a lot this week. We'll get into that in a sec. Um, <laughs> there's a few planets moving into um, Gemini as well. Mars and the moon doing Gemini stuff. And also, uh, at the beginning of the week, Mercury is... Aspecting some things. Okay, so let's just get into it then. I guess the cards are just being like, let's do it. And for whatever shows up that feels relevant, we'll we'll do that. Before we get into the tarot, I'm gonna pull some of these oracle cards. Still with the dream deck. Still with the dream deck. I gotta show you this deck. It's an artist deck. Pretty classic. Vitor Somnirum oniromancy deck. I'm saying it probably all wrong, but this is a really cool deck if you like or into shadow work or do um, my goodness give it time. We have popping right out. Let's take it. Or into, sorry, uh, dream work. Synchronicity and movement. This is our three to start with. Give it time, we have the hourglass showing up. Something wants to take its time, so let it. Synchronicity in reverse and movement in reverse. There's, I think, a need for energetic movement and also an awareness, a deeper awareness of how things are lining up in your life. Almost like, this is sort of saying like, trust that things will happen in their due time um, and that there has been a, at least for me, sensing some like large energetic clearing. So if it feels like there's not a lot going on right now, it might not be true for your life, but if there isn't a lot, a lot of physical evidence of things happening, there could be stuff happening on the inside energetically or the need for that to happen. So where are you putting your attention? Yeah, and that Pisces moon weekend, what are you sensitive to? Underneath we have the Eight of Pentacles. There's some work to do here, meditative work with your intuition. We're just going to take all of these. The High Priestess, Four of Swords, and the Eight of Pentacles showing up to say that there is some spiritual work needing to be done this week. And that was a theme actually for this whole month that I'm getting from like other astrologers, other readers, is that especially with Lionsgate in the month of August and this year in general, is that there's a lot of um, people, I guess, awakening to their spirituality or sort of like what that means for them, like what their expression of that is. And so there's a lot of work this month around that. So let's just take that as a theme for this week because we're going to get more and more into that. Anyway, Eight of Swords, Ace of Cups, Three of Swords, King of Wands, Seven of Cups, The Fool, Six of Pentacles, Justice, and the Ten of Pentacles. 
Bueno. The first thing I noticed. Oh, uh, I said, uh, uh, you know, Gemini is a big theme. Mercury is a big theme this week because there's a lot of transits around those things. And Venus as well. There's an aspect in Venus and Jupiter this week. So basically what these cards are saying in a sentence is like, where, where are your self-limiting beliefs and why don't you love yourself more? <laughs> or how can self-care and self-love teach you to learn, uh, teach you to love yourself better so that you can overcome any self-limiting beliefs? That's really the thing here. I want to remark that the cups in this deck, in the Modern Witch Tarot, look, uh, look similar to the shape of the hourglass and in color to this give it time. So, I've been doing a lot of taking my time recently and I don't know if I said this in the video, like a previous video, or if it's just been coming up in life in general, but this idea of like, um, letting things take their sweet time in a radical practice is sort of like being fully immersed in the thing that you're doing. Even if there's a bunch of other things to do, just allowing for whatever the opportunity is in front of you to like fully emerge. There is a message about that here. Um, something about there being a lot of like our attention being put in many different directions, uh, perhaps anxiety about what we can and cannot do or are able to do, any influence that we have. I see that there's inspiration wanting to come in and this is almost like an offering of love to inspire one another. So where can you lean on people to get you out of um, a phase or a period where you're not really feeling like you can do it. Um, and or it's simply saying that you've come out of this period of stagnation or self-limiting belief because someone um, with a lot of influence in your life has, has inspired you in some way and now there's more reciprocal action. This kind of inspiration can be um, interesting because it's now inspired us, like it's a, it feels like a, an intellectual stimulation that is now causing us to be like, let's create things, let's invent things, let's debate things, let's see things from each other's perspectives. Which is forward movement. That's like learning, it's setting goals, and then ultimately it's like life orientation. Justice here is, is really nice energy of things being uh, balanced. The Three of Swords and the Fool and the Ten of Pentacles. The Fool showed up in reverse. And you know maybe by now that this deck, I don't carry reversals in this deck. So for it to be reversed I guess is an accident of some sort. But I have to take it that it's really wanting to uh, be highlighted here. Look at the opposition of the King of Wands and the Fool on either side of the center cards. The Fool being in reverse makes it so that they're looking away from each other. So it's almost like the King of Wands and the Fool can be opposite energies in this deck. Um, inspiration or influence, we can also take that as, um, you know, a means of control. Uh, we could take that as somebody exhibiting control or compliance through, and this is what showed up next to the King of Wands, through um, giving. So, how are you learning to become more self-reliant and how is that a form of self-love? There are times where we need the help of others. But if you become reliant on um, something, you start... Uh, that's not a form of self-care. So how are you learning to be your own support system, emotional support system? I know that that, that came out last week. 
So what's next? I want to ask where is where is the cutoff and for what is the energy that is next? Let's start with the middle card, this like seven of cups. That's Neptunian energy. That's also 12th house energy. I feel a bit scattered, so I feel like that's actually maybe part of the reading. Scattered efforts is, is distraction. It's like um, mem having challenges with memory. Maybe that could be a theme for this week. We have the four of wands, the moon, and the hanged one. I feel like there's there's still a lot of mental process going on this week. What are you learning? What are you learning how to do differently and learning from others? So we're we're going away from a process of getting our needs met in a very physical sense, like stability from like emotional stability from having material stuff. And into more some something that's more free thinking and sharing as a as a way of emotional. Um, oh, Ace of Cups. Yeah, that's why I keep saying emotional. What is the Moon doing this week? Right. I feel like it's it's having some interesting aspects, causing us to take what we've learned about where we've been compliant, what we've learned about either exhibiting significant influence or being influenced by structures that we could say even like societal structures that are designed to keep us in one place instead of being free so big themes here really big themes freedom from compliance freedom from coercion standing on your own two feet being in ultimately being in community and this is the dream of a collective, this 10 of pentacles. We have to give up the desire for instant gratification in order to receive some larger bounty that serves more people. It takes unlearning and it takes doing things differently. My favorite explanation of the full card as the soul of the tarot is to say that we can look at everything without prejudgment or any conditioning. The fool goes about their day without the constraints of day-to-day -day life. There's nothing that they need to do. There's absolutely nothing that they need to do. This explanation for the, sorry, the clarification for the Seven of Cups was the Four of Wands, the Moon, and the Hanged One. The work, the commitment is to the subconscious this week. The commitment is to um, think before you act. Think, you know, and, and speaking, Gemini and Mercury are highlighted. So that's, that is communication. It's processing through conversation and dialogue. There might be an important conversation happening. Um, it's the safety of knowing that there is space for your feelings to emerge and then integration. That's like what's really going on. Gemini can make things feel a little bit scattered. I think it's uh, Mars moving into Gemini and Mars is, you know, how we go after things in life. So there might be a lot of projects that are like, let me go do all of this stuff. You know, this very much feels right here. Well, I'll include this guy, I guess, the King of Wands. These three right here feel like, well, if I have the ability to, and the agency, to do something about all these things that I want to do, why not just do them? Right? Why, oh, just why not go after it? And so like, maybe that's something to look out for this week is the, <laughs> the unnecessary risk of splitting your efforts in so many different ways. The three of, the, the three of, um, swords that's here is like a grief card and i was thinking a lot about grief before i sat down to do this 
So that could be a theme that shows up. I don't know if I want to get too deep into that, but I just thought I should mention it. Maybe it could be a theme for one or more people who are watching. The experience of grief showing up here. But seeing that right next to the fool is sort of saying, like, how do we integrate pain into our lives instead of pushing it away? What do we do with that? How, do you, how, how does grief make us see things in a new way? All right, and now for the final line here, the Six of Pentacles, Justice, and the Ten of Pentacles. I feel like this is saying, how, are, how is what we are learning about ourselves, what is being revealed to us now, um, orienting our lives to collective dreams and goals? Something that is fair. For everybody based on mutuality this could be about resources or it could just be you know general feeling of everyone having exactly what they need new realities that feel like this don't often just occur they are extensively debated and tried and fail and try again and fail again there i think there's a lot of energy this week that's conducive to the kind of um forward movement like setting these kinds of like big big goals collective goals and then like going out and going after them there's a lot of love there's kindness cordiality sort of in the mix of all of this unlearning and the lessons of moving beyond your own limits based on what you believe. Well, it's always been done this way. I mean, so? There's different ways. There are other ways. Let's read from the the dream deck. Give it time. A clear indication to be patient with the current situation. The message is that other factors are at work beside the querent's own will or emotional state. That time will reveal and change the situation. The tortoise beats the hare. Clarity will come and time heals all wounds. We have the wound. We have the wound here. We have the hanged one. Take your time. This is the, the inner work is, is happening. Are you paying attention? That's kind of what I want to know. Are you paying attention to what's happening inside of you right now? Synchronicity. If there are reoccurring themes, symbols, animals, topics, these are your little hints of where you need to focus your attention. Just talked about attention. Are you paying attention? Um, signs that you are on your correct path and your guides are trying to give you aid along the way. Trust and believe. It's showing up in reverse, so I feel like somebody needs to hear this part. When we are on our divine path and pursuing our true purpose, we will see and find synchronicity everywhere. However, if we are in disaccordance due to lack of action, failure to meet a challenge, or negative or toxic influences, we disconnect and life seems to become less magical and serendipitous. What is required to reconnect you and to help you experience synchronicity in your life. Pull more cards if information is required. So what showed up under synchronicity was the Ace of Cups, the Seven of Cups, and Justice. What is required, to answer the question, what is required to experience more synchronicity in your life? Focus. Focus on what truly matters to you, what's important, what gives you direction, the Seven of Cups, the, the energy of this week will very much be like, let's do all of the projects. There's so many things I could do. And I feel like what really wants to happen is this sort of like goal orient, setting goals to orient ourselves towards the singular most important thing in our lives. And it doesn't have to be one thing, but you kind of get the idea here. Risk of becoming too scattered for being too intellectual and not enough f 
feeling in the movement. Okay, and finally, movement is the last card. <laughs> okay, movement. This card pertains to all forms of movement. It can mean you are actually moving, an energetic movement or a person moving towards you. Pay attention to where this card is or surrounding cards for more information. Movement has been stopped or hinted. This did show in the reverse, so I'll read the reverse for anybody it may reference. Movement has been stopped or hindered. This can be physical or energetic movement. Try to think of ways to, cre to create movement in your life again. Try things that push you out of your comfort zone. Travel, take a class, balance your chakras, move your chi, either through exercise or the acupuncture in order to avoid stagnation. Do things outside of your comfort zone. That's the full showing up here. So, yeah. I'm gonna talk about the imagery really quick of this card specifically because of sort of where this reading had ended up. The swords represent our intellect and our mind and our nervous system. When we have trauma that happens to us or any sort of kinds of thinking that are harmful or toxic, it really does puncture and kill senses of feeling. And it, you know, for example, prevents us from leading more with our hearts than our brains. There's a lot of intellectual stimulation going on this week. That's where the work is being done. How is that connecting you to how you feel? How does that connect to how you feel and how that, when you connect those two things, how do, you know, what are you then sharing with other people based on what you find out about yourself or about your situations? Because I feel like if you start doing that, you'll find you're not actually alone. You're gonna find that a lot of people may feel the same way but have different ideas about how to move forward. And that's where the magic is this week. All right. Oh, I got a new deck. <laughs> so I'll maybe record the deck interview. There is a video about doing deck interviews that I did before. Um, I might just record another one. This is the Voyager deck. This one is legit from the 80s. It's very cool. I'll give you a little preview. And maybe we'll just pull one for ourselves right now. How about that? Uh, what's the next weekend? Well, yeah, it's a next this this coming week's weekend will be a Gemini Moon weekend. Great for sharing. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It's about doing the work. The Hermit. Talk about doing the work, right? The Hermit is Virgo. Um, Virgo is referencing potentially the Virgo new moon that is coming up. It's also the month of September. It is all insinuated through this card, the Hermit. This is about getting your stuff in order. This is about recommitting to healthy routines, doing things that feel good and keeping things simple and organized as best you can for yourself in this chaotic world. Good luck. I'll see you on the next one.